It happens to every musician in this country. You get to a certain point and your parents say, when are you going to get a real job? <laughs> <laughs> Were your parents supportive of well, music career? I, I, when I came home and said to my mother, I said I was going to go to Juilliard, which was really a misstatement. I was going to go to the building. <laughs> That's what I did. And, I, and it took me a year to get it through the front door. She came up to New York because I was doing a concert at Queens College. And it was a big hall. You know, the colleges have places where people graduate from. So they have to have big places that hold two or th 3,000 people. Hmm. And there were six people in the audience, <laughs> and she was one of them. <laughs> and this is what my mother said. If you do this, you're going to be moving from city to city, playing, playing jobs here and there, uh, never settling down. And I'm thinking, wow, that sounds great. <laughs> <laughs> well, families are families, and they're wonderful. Yeah. But uh, when you choose a life like this, not many people can... I can't understand that. Yeah. I first heard Philip's music because um, I'd go to Virgin Megastores and just buy um, stacks of CDs based on artwork. And I saw the artwork to Glassworks and just bought it and I even thinking, you know, who knows what it could be. And I was so blown away. And then after that, you know, just wanted to find more. And from then on, I would seek stuff out and uh, listen and yeah. I don't know if you noticed it over the years, but how, um, yeah, your music has crossed, crossed boundaries to the point where, yeah, it's classical music, but um, it's it's wider than that. And it's uh, to maybe even pop to some, to some degrees. I, I grew up in Baltimore, Maryland. My dad had a little record store downtown. I began working there when I was 12. And um, by the time I was 15, I was a record buyer for the store. My dad was a car mechanic. He began fixing radios and ended up selling records out of his radio shop and then ended up having a record store. <laughs> he didn't know anything about music, but he was a, he loved music. Mm. He didn't say, this is the good music and this is the bad music mm. or this is the classical music. We never used those words. Yeah. It was all just music. Music, yeah. So I, I grew up that way. Hmm. So what year did you move to New York from Baltimore? Let's see, I think I came in 57. I moved to New York from London 10 years ago. I just turned 21. And I didn't really come for any purpose. The New York influence for me, I guess, is in, yeah, in the pulse, in the pace of the city. It's just something you, you hear a lot in Philip Glass's music. I mean, the fact that he drove taxi cabs, like, really, you, you, can feel, you can feel that, especially in those pieces around that time. You can really sense it. What were some of the things when you first moved to New York that you did that were well, not I had a, music? I had day jobs. I did very simple things like loading trucks and moving furniture. Mm. I was in very good shape. <laughs> but uh, I, what I liked about it was that I, I, I was very independent. Yeah. And I, also, I never took a job that I couldn't quit really easily. Uh, I need to <laughs> you know, put that one in. I know, now. because cause I, I wanted to go, what I really wanted to do was to go out and play. Mm. When the ensemble started maybe in 71, 72, we could get jobs, but I couldn't, and I could get enough to pay the players but not that much, but, it, yeah. but I didn't get paid for years. After Einstein, the next week I was, was driving a cab. It was a big hit, but it was not a financial success. Yeah. We, we sold full houses, we thought we were making money, we found out we had lost money. <laughs> we were really stupid, but you know, we were just very idealistic and we didn't know anything about it. Yeah. It was okay. I didn't really care about the money. He plays live way more than I do, <laughs> which is incredible. He keeps playing and keeps writing, premiering new pieces. And, and in fact, he's constantly trying to like 
do something better and he's trying to do something different and something that would surprise the audience. In the worst times we have in this country, that's when the arts get best. Right now, there are a lot of problems in this country. There are race problems, there are uh, economic problems, there are all kinds of these things that are going on. And when that happens, the arts and the artists become the voice. It's a wonderful thing. Mm. I went to see Hamilton. I thought it was so great. <laughs> I thought, oh, Maybe Jefferson was like that. Maybe Jefferson was a <laughs> hip hop guy. Did you, did you see that? I never. Oh, no, you I can't, go I can't get a ticket. They're, they're talking in in, yeah. in language that you know, yeah. and and they're supposed to be the founding fathers. Well, they're they're hipsters. It was really <laughs> you got to see it. Yeah. When things get out of balance, the arts come in and bring the human side back. Without that, our societies would be prisons. They wouldn't be able to renew themselves. <laughs>